Uh, to me, a food plot's not effective unless you actually get daylight use from deer on it. Far too often people focus on what you plant. We're a food plot seed company. And you'll notice that a lot of our food plot videos don't deal with exactly what to plant. It deals with the strategy of food plots. What you plant is part of that strategy, but it's not the only thing. And when it comes to getting a deer to use your food plot during the daylight, there's a lot of other factors to consider other than how perfect the soil is and how perfect the seed is that you put on the ground. I'm gonna start off with one thing right here. First and foremost, if you hunt the food plot, you can't spook the deer getting in and out. So on a food plot like this, about a quarter acre in size, you can see the, the scale of it going all the way back down to the back there. We're actually gonna take out one of those trees that fell down. We're gonna take out a couple of these trees just to get more sunlight. We're maximizing the use of the plot, really critical. But when we have this little food plot right here, this is small enough, the deer aren't just hanging out here all the time. They pass through it on their way to larger food sources. Maybe it's an ag field nearby or a bigger food plot somewhere else. Bottom line is though, we can't spook the deer on this food plot when we come in and out. So this food plot has to be hidden. Maybe we're going to other stands in the area. We're going to a bedding area stand nearby. We can't spook the deer on this food plot going to other stands or a stand along here. We can bow hunt this plot. This is where I shot Bo, a six and a half year old buck. He walked right through where I'm standing here, made a scrape right there, started across the plot. I shot him right there, straight behind me, about 15 yards out of that stand location right there. That tree stand where I'm sitting is only 11 feet off the ground. That's a 12 foot stick that we use from Family Tradition Tree Stands, a 12 foot ladder, supposed to be 20. We took the top two sections or four foot a piece and I just put that stand up there because that's where it's most hidden. You can't see me up there as a deer when I'm using that. And so it's really critical to stay hidden. And if you are hunting that food plot, you can't spook the deer. I repeat that, you can't spook the deer off your food plots, so critical. So in this, for example, we have this heavy wall of gray dogwood, old sumac, brush, and then up in the top up there, we have a layer of switchgrass. And so we have that double layer so that we can go by here, not spook the deer that are on the plot. We can get into a stand that's just a pass-through plot. It's a true hunting plot because we're on the way to something else. We have those multiple layers. And you can see a lot of the brush that's growing in on this side right here. When deer are 30, 40 yards back, they can't see us getting into that stand either. And does it make sense if we were climbing 10 feet higher into the tree, getting 20 feet up like a lot of our stands, we're exposing ourselves to more deer at every step that could be back further into the woods. So just coming in low, staying in full cover is a really good sniper tactic to get in here and look at these deer. We have that outside layer. And then when it comes to big food plots, you can't get into those big food plots and hunt and get out of them without spooking deer. Our food plots in Wisconsin we've had since 2014. We don't hunt those with a bow. We haven't hunted those with a bow. And the reason for that is if we get in there, we're gonna spook every deer off all three of the plots that are up there. They total about three and a quarter acres. So think about that, for 10 years, we've had food plots over there, 10 full seasons, and we haven't hunted them because we shoot the deer either from a distance over those big food plots with a muzzleloader or rifle, or we shoot the deer that relate to them with a bow up in the hills, which is what I did this year with the big nine. So because those food plots are true daylight plots, meaning that they're screened, we don't spook the deer off from hunting, we hunt the plots if appropriate because they're a pass through to something else and we get on and off the plot without spooking deer. Those are some of the steps. And we're creating that daylight atmosphere that really sets a tone for the entire property. Now then it comes down to what you plant. You can see it in a, in a case like this, we have clover coming in here and chicory that was established last year along with alfalfa. So this will turn into a, our perennial plot power, we call it, our PPP blend. This will turn into that going in through this year. So how does that help us? You know, right now, this is early March. The forage is eaten down to the ground, but even then we have some rye that's starting to poke through. They can nibble on a little bit. There's deer tracks everywhere out here, but we need to have this this pattern of use established on this little plot right here during the summertime so that deer want to come back and visit it during the, during the fall, during actually the rut. When Bo came through here, he didn't even take a bite coming all the way through here. 
He, I'm sure you would have nibbled a couple times coming through here, but he's just looking for does. He's used to this food plot having food and it was lasting, it was October 27th when I shot him. And if we would have planted beans in here, for example, they would have been down to the dirt. If we would have planted straight brassica, and this was an up north food plot, they probably would have been down to the dirt. They can't take a lot of browse pressure, which a brassica plot will get a lot more browse pressure up north. At the same time, if this plot right here was all brassica, and I'm just going through some of the scenarios, then this isn't something, they wouldn't eat that brassica typically until later in December, around here and so if we don't offer something in the early season for them something that they can establish a pattern of use with during the summertime then they're not going to come back in the fall if there's no food they're not going to come back through here so what's nice about a clover blend like this is it'll last appreciably into november the deer get used to coming into it in the summer but it's not it's on our hunting plots we have 17 and a half acres of plots out here we have about six plot with plots with clover in them and small little corners that total about an acre and a half out of 17 and a half acres. So it's not enough to pile a bunch of does and fawns on here that keep hitting it. But you have to have appreciable food at least going in through October into early November if it starts running out in December. I apologize for cutting in the video. I'll try to keep this 20 seconds or less. But we're thinking about planting and so is Lincoln at Packer Max. And right now he doesn't offer very many deals. It's $50 off. Check out the code WHS50, it's in the link in the description. Try them, great product, check it out, you won't be sorry. Those bucks will still come through here because they've established a pattern of use on it, even if they live somewhere else during the summer. Once or twice a month they'll come through, hey, there's some food here, I'll eat a little bit. Establishes a pattern, they'll start using it more and more as it gets into September and then October, and then you have them like Bo last year. And it's no different with those big plots. We want variety and diversity on the big plots that actually last the entire hunting season. So we don't want those running out in November and December, like a little hunting plot where a buck will just make it through a pass-through because he's screened, because he's hidden, because you never spook, him up, spook the deer off. Those big plots, you want deer to start foraging sometime in late August, September, and you want them to be able to forage all the way through the season at least. And if you have food left over that supplies some winter uh, forage, that's a really good thing. But with those larger food plots, they have to be screened. You can never spook them off those plots. And if you do that, it doesn't matter if it's a smaller plot like this, it's a true hunting plot or a bigger one that you hunt from a distance and the deer never seen you, see you coming or going, entering or exiting that, that blind location, then those deer will be there. How many times have you ever driven by and you looked way back in a field and in the corner of the field, just around where you can barely see, there's a pile of deer. They have older bucks, younger bucks, does, fawns, a big pile of them in a small area. They're there because it's hidden, because people don't spook them out of those locations. And that's why around here, especially when you get onto some of the main two lane roads that crisscross through the highway, you'd think you'd see all these monsters driving around out here that are out in the hills, but you hardly ever see them because they're in those hidden corners. Make those food plots on your property, whether it's a hunting plot or a big, I call it a holding plot because you want deer attracted to it and then you hold them until dark and release them after that to your neighbors that spook out their food plots, to your neighbors' ag fields, whatever it might be. But make those plots, those hidden corners on your land and really good things happen. Because if you know deer hitting this during the daylight, they're close. If I know a six-year-old buck is going through here, or a four-year-old or five-year-old, we have him if he's coming through during the daylight because that means he's bedding within two, 300 yards. We know where he's bedding. We know where he's going to after dark. We know where he's going to right before dark. And it sets up an entire table of morning stands by bedding where he's at afternoon stands by food sources, little hunting plots he's passing through to get to a bigger plot. It sets up those afternoon stands around the food, those morning stands back in the bedding areas, and you have them. And that's the name of the game. Really set the tone that your property is a daylight parcel. And if you spook these deer out of here, you're in big trouble. Because once you spook deer out of this plot, the one next to it, a holding plot, a hunting plot, they're not gonna be within 200 yards in any direction. That's a really bad thing because they know that this is not a daylight food source. That doesn't mean they just live 100 yards away and come in here, they just go somewhere else. And so you can take a 40 acre parcel, put plots that you pressure, and you destroy that entire 40 acres. And we have sections of land out here, pieces. 
And so each one of those, we have major food sources. And if we spook them out, we're ruining a whole 30 to 80 acres at one time. And that's what people don't realize. And that's why it's so tough because we can't afford to make mistakes out here. We can't go a half mile over that way because we're on the neighbor's land. And that's the problem with a lot of small hunting parcels, even if they're fragmented, even if they're 500 acres, once you spook the deer, deer travel about a half mile. Think of that. And if you spook them repeatedly, they're starting to get into that half mile boundary away from where you spook them. And that means they're not on your property during the daylight. And if they're not patterning on your property during the daylight, they're doing it somewhere else. And that makes it nearly impossible to grow a quality herd and hunt. So get your food plots daylight, make them be that hidden corner and you'll have a lot of fun. It's something that I call it the 5% club because very few hunters and landowners get to experience that. And I want you on this channel to experience it because it's a whole lot of fun. It's very rewarding and it gives you, your family and friends, a great hunt and a great herd that'll last a lifetime of hunting.